He can adjust his track by 10 degrees. It looks like we're separating. Right? Yeah. I'm just thinking because for the ship to do that, it would have to come out of its current move and then it would stop. Okay, well. Yeah. Yeah, we're, we don't have that much more to go anyway. Yeah. You guys are about 15 meters apart. Yeah. All right. We have about 50 meters to go. Did you say 50 or 15? Five zero meters to Five go. Zero. Okay. Hi, Belgium. Happy to have you with us today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you to all our viewers and listeners. We appreciate you being a part of this dive with us. We're coming right to the end of our our mapping and our surveying. We'll be rolling right into that photogrammetry and immerse, um, immersive imaging there. Coming up next. So Kristen, what as a geochemist interests you about this marine archaeology dive? I don't know. It sounds like you guys saw some microbial mats yesterday when you were down on the other so so yeah, just kind of interacting with like how the environment interacts with the the subs at once they've reached the bottom. Yeah. Um I'm also just interested for the archaeology of it. I mean, I thought at a point in my life that I might do archaeology. Never quite made it there, but it's just cool to see all this stuff and find it and be able to explore a little bit more. I agree. Also, to Devin's point a little bit earlier, yeah, I was a little surprised that we didn't see more stuff uh, colonizing the wreck. Hmm. I mean, there was stuff there, but it, I felt like we would see more. But so the there was the the two zero one, and then there was an even higher speed, smaller, and I gotta dig it back out. But it was like the HAI two zero one. It was a different variant on the. 201 mm -hmm. and in the notes for th for that particular sub they're both built about the same time they talked about like a rubberized coating being okay. on the hull and so yeah. when you guys were talking about the not seeing more life i thought well and maybe you mentioned it too Devin, yeah that you know from the uh yeah depending on what kind of paints or exactly. coatings that they use yeah it could just and be could have been much more toxic yeah. almost yeah. than what we're exactly. accustomed to so well that would be a cool thing to sample and find out what's in there that's true <laughs> yeah Yeah, that type of thing definitely. I mean, you design ships like the hulls to be able to kind of like resist, resist growth, all yeah. that stuff. Yeah, the biofouling is is an issue. So that's something you're especially with a submarine. Right. So that's a big issue. You're trying for speed and and all of that. So hydrodynamics. So. Of course, that stuff is generally pretty toxic. So <laughs> to inhibit the growth of things. Yeah. And it'd be interesting to see over time, too, since we have the last um, images and, and the, the surveying that's happened, um, just to compare the amount of growth mm -hmm. to yeah, see what, what I mean, from that you could go right into yeah. the, the length and time period that it takes for that coating to kind of dissipate yeah. and go, you know. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely kind of get a growth rate for the, mm -hmm. or the colonization rate of, yeah. The, yeah. of the wreck. Yeah. Lots of science. <laughs> it's fabulous. It's also interesting, too, though, because it seems like microbes will eat just about anything. So mm -hmm. even if it's something that's toxic to one microbe, you could. it seems like something else always comes along to take so care of it. Are we going to try and find the other piece, or what's the scene here? We're going to 
we're going to do the photogrammetry and the immersive surveying of this section. And then with time uh, line. We're just tracking a line, so we can stop whenever. With time allowing, we'll go hunt for and then image okay. the other section. Let me know. Sounds good. And Kristen, I've got a question that maybe you can add some insight to. Why do corals and sponges like to colonize on iron and other metals on the ocean floor? That is a good question. I don't know if it really matters what it is. I think those types of things are just looking for a substrate. So just hard, because it's yeah. hard. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So something it, to stick and hold on to. Yeah, like if it's a rock or anything that's hard. Wood also is something that they'll, you know. Um, that stability. Yeah, they just are looking for somewhere to kind of plant themselves. <laughs> How about uh, when we were at the... Uh, that impressive coral site a couple of days ago, the we had a coral that was dead that had fallen over that looked to be thousands of years old based right. on the size of it. And then you had a coral growing onto the that dead coral that was also equally as impressive that was hundreds and hundreds of years old probably. Yeah. I mean, again, like... Well, I mean, once a coral dies, it's basically a rock, rock. right? So, yeah, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, they, they just need something Sounds to good. latch on to, so... Bridge, bridge, nav, please hold position here. Thank you. All right, so maybe we we uh, page Jonathan up to the control van to get this cameras rocking and rolling before we get to the bottom here. Yeah, we're about 50 meters from the north tip, so it will take us a second to get down, get situated, situated and head that way. So we are just asleep away from the end of this expedition. Highlights for you, Jason? Um, the weather. The weather. <laughs> it's crazy that today has just been the only day that we've been completely overcast, rain kind of scattered all around us. It, it, we've had the most gorgeous weather.
Yeah, as an expedition leader with multiple sites scattered all over these kind of microclimates and unique um, conditions at each of the islands, I was I was really stressed that I wasn't going to be able to lay out a plan where we could just be efficient. You know, I didn't want to have to like hang Hopefully. out on the lee and waste a day or two, and because it was just a two-week expedition, but it turned out everyone was pretty tolerant with the hopping around, and we were able to like really work every day and make the most of it. So, thanks everybody for that. So, like from a, I know that's not the answer you wanted. No, no, I, it's it's <laughs> a c absolutely appropriate answer. I mean, um, for you, that that is that's. Along that same theme, the the way the teams have worked together has been exceptional. So I've been just very very happy with that. From a site, it's going to be hard to. I I want to see this like poll of the columnar basalts versus the precious coral beds. Our second trip. Oh, there, that's but tough. But I mean, that, the coral bed was just uh, beautiful. And I think it was the colors, you know, the, for me that. Okay. All right. <laughs> Our heading will be about 115. How can we serve you, Jonathan? What, what, <laughs> what do you need? I didn't, someone called me to the van. <laughs> What's going on? We're headed to the bottom. So we're, oh. gonna, we're gonna be, for, we're gonna be starting the camera work. Hell, well, we're not ready yet. And also, someone wants to know uh, how much longer before Sketch Fab is going to have up the torpedo model. The torpedo week? model is on Sketch Fab. Oh, sweet, sweet. Wait, theoretically, let me check the upload. Oh. <laughs> All right, we had a crest for the torpedo. Let's see, what did I do with that? You all can see me doing this in near real time. Mm. Uh, uh, maybe to satisfy the viewer, if you wanted to display the model here. Uh, yeah, what's You're on guy? sat feed three now. I am. Because yeah. we we do have Hans on the line, and Hans was we were kind of going back and forth on what it could be. He might. Oh, really? Jump in with uh, hmm. some insight. I had someone wondering whether or not it could have been a practice torpedo. That's yeah. what we're, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. So you'll s hopefully the it's clear in the model the coloring, but there was this yellow. The first, you know, maybe eighteen inches, two feet of the forward section. Of so the yeah, we'll head down to yellow. the bottom now and do a white balance. Okay, and then are we planning on going like? Stay in a distance and check them for lines. Is that what we're doing? Yeah. Yeah, we're absolutely. Not, we'll make sure it's right safe. In, right? <laughs> Just to be clear there. Hey. Copy. Come on, text me. Are we clear there? <laughs> not all of us. <laughs> <laughs> Front row is clear. <laughs> oh, sorry, we're uh, enamored with the torpedo model that's coming up. Say again, Johan, what was the... We're t we were what talking about design? whether we're going to do a pass down the length, like off the wreck, to make sure there's no lines and. Hundred percent safety okay. assessment first, and okay. then then we'll get to the business. Is I, you get Jonathan launching into Jonathan mode. And didn't want to. I was the one that was called <laughs> up to the van. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought you guys down. were ready. Potentially a little premature. Yeah. My time is valuable. <laughs> we. <laughs> I, was, I thought I thought I was here, ready. Show you action, action. We serve at the pleasure of the producer. <laughs> <laughs> Unlimited power. I found some information on the interweb about the torpedoes in yellow. Oh yeah. Uh, only training heads were painted yellow in order to aid in recovery. Oh, I think they failed in recovering this one. Or weren't they supposed to float once they? All right, so. Can you, yeah, get some perspective and then I'll leave it there. Maybe Hans can jump in and direct the spins and stuff. There you go, Hans. Maybe on a coffee break, but yeah, we'll yeah. leave it there. That'll happen. The actual warheads were never painted yellow. Well, they wanted to trick something.
Yeah, no, this, this is Hans. This kind of thing we'd, we'd contact the ordinance experts for. It's not in my wheelhouse really to, to, to analyze this much further, but it's wonderful imagery and modeling. So Hans, if you, uh, we thought after our kind of hasty searching the web uh, that this might be a Mark 27, just based on this, and Jonathan's got the image up of this tail section. It's got some distinct uh, maybe stabilizers or something that, that die into the, the prop there. Um, if you take a look, yep, I'd love to hear what you think, just in the, those two perspectives. Yeah, yeah. My first stop would be, you know, the the, the yeah. Bolton Submarine Museum over there in Pearl Harbor. So what if we rig an Atlanta dive to recover the practice torpedo? <laughs> yeah. Wow. Can you imagine how quickly Dan is going to text me and say, stop talking about recovering the torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be after <laughs> Dan's coming through. He's typing yeah. as I'm leaving my time. No, not in the cards for this one, but cool find nonetheless. All right, we're on the bottom. Let's let's do the work here. Oh, All right, on the starting, screen. starting photogrammetry. No, we we're go. looking for hazards first. You don't you don't have control yet. Shipmate. <laughs> we just really missed you. <laughs> you can go get me a cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> I'd gladly do that, Robert. Do you take it black? No, a little a little milk. Mat match the bitterness of your soul. <laughs> <laughs> All right, asking you shall receive. Wow. Oh, you know, I'm, all watches are my watches. Robert, we're having some bigger swells today. Anyone we else? We can definitely Skittles? feel it inside the cab. Is that making it uh, any more challenging for you to, uh, now that we're getting ready for pictures? No, this is still pretty, pretty light weather conditions, so we're not having any problems. Other than not turning the arm on, that's being a problem. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's downstairs. Hey, paper cup. I'll, you don't have to fill it either. Just a wee bit. <laughs> All right, Robert, Pete, uh, Robert, and uh, Human, help me out with this one. Is there uh, a heave compensator on Atlanta's tether or an um, or umbilical? Uh, we don't have a heave compensated winch set up. Okay. We have, yeah, it's a two-body system with a neutrally buoyant tether between them. And that's how we decouple the ship motion. We need lasers off, too. We don't want to burn the tape with the lasers. Is that what that? I think it messes his white balance up. I got a lot of laser jokes and nobody seems to laugh. All right. While we do a white balance check, Atlanta got hung up on that fishing line. Yes, and that I think was the highlight for me because I was in an interaction and in that, and Video we sw sw a, switched over to the live feed, and we're like, all I saw was the knife in the hand of the <laughs> in, in Hercules' hand, and I was like, what is going on back there? We had no clue what was happening, yeah, and so yeah. I made some lame joke about Halloween. <laughs> Yeah, that was probably the most dramatic scene to cut to. Yeah, that, that we had, had and having no idea what was going on. Yeah. You can start to move in towards the... Copy. So we're going stern forward there. Yeah, so... So you want to be still a ways from it. I'll be stretched out in front. Yep, I'll start with a 30 meter move and then right. do like a 15 or something. All set, thank you. So Pete, you just did our, rage, our white balance net. check. I have a viewer Three, that wants zero, to know how close one, one, zero, please. to the actual color of the objects uh, are we seeing on the PCs? Is representation of that color pretty accurate? Uh, 
copy, thanks. So the purpose of the white balance is to have a calibrated point for the camera. So when you have lots of changes in light, it can affect how the camera perceives what it's looking at. So you have a constant, which is the white tape. And then when you set to that, now when we see colors, that is going to be as close as it gets. Perfect. It'd be like this equivalent of, you know, Thank boiling you water so at sea level always gets to 100 degrees centigrade. Mm -hmm. This is the similar thing except for color. Awesome. Thank you. Uh, it's easy to see here because we have the Norbit map. We're about 60 meters off. The ship started to move that way. Did it latch? Hey, can we zoom in? Looks like a, a wheel with a hand thing on it, right? Like a crank type. Yeah, a crank kind of thing. Maybe. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's the world's first clarinet. <laughs> a crank clarinet. Uh, <laughs> All right, you can zoom out. Ramon, do you want to try turning a light or two off? off oh uh, yeah we can turn off How about the down there we go that's a nice contrast there All right. We can see it in Atalanta. Yeah, you're about a meter away, I think. A meter away? You're about the width of Hercules away. Oh, from but that thing. <laughs> He's talking about the sonar. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that would be bad. <laughs> I'm doing my job wrong. <laughs> I don't want to look at those. 
Johan? Yeah. So as I look at in this center. Uh, that is not our location, but I'm not sure what that represents. Do you know what the lat lawn up in the meso cameras is? It's not, it's not us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think that's a part of the zoom box and it probably doesn't, I don't think that, that this, that sonar has any input for lat lawn. Like there's, you can, that's an option. But it doesn't have it, so it doesn't know where it is. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. That's yeah. I mean, that's definitely not our location at all. So. No. That. <laughs> if they're going by that, they're gonna get lost. <laughs> <laughs> Bridge, bridge, nav, one zero at one two zero, please. One two zero. Thank you. You already have the latest and greatest in here? No, oh. we don't yet. What's the holdup? <laughs> <laughs> diddle lab, diddle lab. <laughs> uh, uh, sorry, I was joking. I didn't realize you were on SPL. <laughs> I'm always listening. <laughs> Robert's wondering where our new map is. <laughs> oh, it's coming. All right. <laughs> we'll have it before you get there. Wow. <laughs> no worries. So in lieu of having Norbit down uh, SAT-3, we have the sonar, which is pretty uh, pretty cool, what it's uh, showing. It's like a 12 degree cone, I think. Yeah. So you would have to do the trick to figure that out, but. Jason, just yeah, when I think. I think the total width is 12 degrees, I think. This ship can't get any more impressive. I continue to read about it, and it does. That's why we don't see things up close. Four 2,250 yeah. horsepower engines. It's insane. No, it is. Uh, uh, I mean, yesterday we had this fast moving, uh, stealthy submarine. You yeah. know, that was twice as fast as its American counterparts. And here we're at this massive oh. Japanese sub today that has aircraft. He's saying that you have Norbit to navigate off. It's, it's navigate just so of impressive. Uh, yeah. It's Able to circumnavigate the world one and a half times with the amount of fuel that it can hold.
30 meters away in Herc's view, 25. Bridge, bridge, nav, another one zero meters at one one zero, please. Thank you. Yep. Looks like we're coming up on something. Yes. So do you have to load the photos for like this section? Just aren't in the model yet? Oh, there you go. The upper lights are really uh, hitting a lot of snow. Atalanta's coming a little closer, but not very much. I'm going to turn the lights on. I think the upper Herc lights are what's kind of uh, uh. giving us a hard time here. It's up to you. You, you do what you got to do. Let me try it out. And then okay. If not, I'll just go back.
Okay, I'll come along at about 165. Bridge, bridge, nav, two zero meters at 160, please. Bob, can you adjust your lights maybe to get some of that, reduce the back scatter? Awesome, thank you. Copy, thank you. I'm just going to have a hard time helping you with the uh, spotting anything. If, I don't know. Pretty heavy backscatter here. Water clarity. Fish friend. So the precision of our mapping is allowing us to come in at just the right angle to start our photogrammetry imaging. I'm prepared. We never doubted that. Just some observations, you know, for photogrammetry and doing this style of work, the water clarity is obviously important. It's one of the main challenges to doing any photogrammetry underwater is that uh, we're bringing our own light with us. And in this instance where the lights are so close to the cameras, which is something you just have to do on an ROV. Yes, or, sir. You prefer the low light? We prefer not so much marine snow, and that's oh, what you yeah. call what's uh, this white material, flocculent that's in the water. Uh, it's reflecting back a great deal of the light and hazes out the image. And for uh, a process like uh, photogrammetry, uh, which is relying on a computer algorithm to find high contrast points and measure the distance and how much those points change between different photos, Having a bunch of high contrast points like marine snow is quite disastrous to the. Uh, so that presents process. quite a challenge for you as we try to work then off of the amount of marine snow that we have and then the backlights of Hercules and at Atlanta. So we That's try correct. to balance that out, turn some of those lights on and off to get the perfect view. It's exactly it, yeah. That's correct. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we're pretty far away. So yeah. This, this pass is just a uh, Copy that. Hans, I'm not sure if you're on. I'm curious what camera they used during the 2009 expedition um, off of, uh, was that the Pisces as well? Just right now viewing the image. Uh, Hans shared an image of the Mark 27, presumed Mark 27 torpedo of, um, that we saw uh, yesterday um, from the 2009 expedition. Bridge, bridge, nav, another two zero meters at 165, please. Bridge, bridge nav, can you do 165? Thank you. Thanks. Hans, do we have you back online? Mm -hmm. I think we might have lost a connection there. Okay. We're working on it. I'll ask him later.
Remember me. Remember me. Has that V-Link connection's been quite challenging today. So I don't know if uh, Hans wants to give us a quick uh, audio check. Yeah, Hans, check in with us if you can. Uh-oh. Bridge, bridge, nav, another two zero meters at one six five, please. Copy, thank you. Bob, have you seen anything of concern yet? I mean what do you what do you think? Robert, Jason's talking to you on SPL. Sorry, yeah. Hey, Bob, you see anything that was concerning or? Nope. Yeah. So far, it's all looking good. Yeah, I thought the same thing. A good question come in. Is there uh, anyone on the team that this is the first submarine that they've explored for sure? Mine. Um, I've just been so incredibly impressed with 
learning about the technology that was already on board and um, yeah. what the Japanese had, had yeah. created. It's just been fascinating to, to learn about. So I've had the privilege of being in a submarine before uh, and now seeing one from this angle, it's just a, a wonderful opportunity. What? Just getting some information in regards to uh, the size of this vessel or the submarine, uh, 400 feet long, three seaplanes that were carried on the submarine, each of them able to do a radius of 34,000 miles. This sub was able to stay 120 days out at sea. And I think the thing that's really blown my mind is have, knowing that there's uh, four 2,250 horsepower engines, diesel engines on board, and just yeah, the power right. that is associated with that. Incredible. And had enough fuel on board that they could uh, circumnavigate the globe one and a half times. That's, it's just, it's, it's massive. Well, we, so we did the, uh, the reference, and this is like two Nautilus, the length of two Nautiluses, right? So yeah. the ship that we're on with all this capability and there's, what, 50 of us on, on here bumping into each other? And oh, that's the one thing I haven't looked yet. Did we see what how much of a crew it could hold? Uh, that's a good question. Let's see if I have that at my fingertips. Bridge, bridge, nav, three zero meters at 165, please. Whoever writes these dive plans could include more helpful information in them. <laughs> Next time, I don't know if you have a little <laughs> feedback there. Copy, thank you. Yep, we're coming up on the sail. Hundred and fifty seven officers and enlisted. In some cases up to two hundred depending on about hundred and fifty, thanks Larry. Yeah. Hundred forty four. So yeah, we're we're from what everybody's chiming in, it, it is an amazing uh, piece of technology for sure, and especially for the time in the era. And yes, we were able to pull up that we actually do have um, at the Air and Space Museum in, in, in DC, they have the last remaining plane on, on display there. Yeah, at the National Air and Space Museum at Dulles International Airport, just outside of Dulles International Airport, they have the only existing uh, of this float plane that would have had its wings folded up and the pontoons removed to fit inside of the hangar bay um, of this aircraft. But within seven minutes of surfacing, they could have the aircraft launched that's incredible. Which is wild, yeah. I mean, I'm sure there's a statistic, and I don't know it, about the, you know, if on a U.S. aircraft carrier, if the pilots are in the ready room and they say Go. launch, what what does that time take? And it's, yeah. I'm sure it's minutes, you know. Um, I just have this vision of the submarine surfacing, and as soon as it's breaking, just everyone scrambling about to have this whole process take yeah. place and just to be so quick about it to get back down uh, under and then out of, it's just, uh, it's amazing. The Sarin float plane, that's what they call it. Thank you for that help with the pronunciation. I appreciate that. Sarin. Yeah, we're almost. Johan, how much till the end? And then are we good to, f to photogrammetry our way on this side back? Or what do you, th are we going to go around the other side? I would, I kind of want to get to the getting. Yeah, I think we were able to see over the top of it. So it looks clear to me. Sounds I good. think I'm okay with that. You don't have a whole lot of time. Yeah. Five minutes. 
Uh, yeah, we're pretty close to the end here. Hercules is about there. So yeah, maybe five more minutes and then time to get settled in position and camera stuff and we'll be off on that. And this mapping very important, helping us gain situ situational awareness of where we are uh, and looking for hazards. We've we've already had a dive that we experienced a, a rope hazard. So it's always good to check to make sure that we're free and clear, keep Hercules safe. Wrecks are kind of notorious for collecting lines and fishing gear. So. Things get hung up on it for sure. Although with your piloting skills, Robert, I have no doubt that we could take. That I can on get hung up in a line. <laughs> <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> Devin, that's kind of mean. What? <laughs> All right, I think we're we're good. What's the plan? Jonathan's firing up the cameras. Uh, I think typically it's going to be uh, near yeah. the bottom without touching bridge, in bridge close to do the focus test. Place. This is probably our first evolution. And then. All right. There we go. There's a lot. Hold of uh, current position, please. Thank you. It's uh, a lot of. Okay. Okay. Just getting the triclops visualization set up here for us. Right. You want a monkey with lights? Uh, what's our standoff distance now? Uh, we are, what is that, 10 meter per division? Yeah. Yeah, we're about five, six meters away. Oh, that's not good. That's not good. More? Um, yeah, let's, uh, let's do three and then turn off all the lights or everything. Uh, I'm just looking at the backscatter right now. Yeah. Let's get up a little closer and see how close okay. we need to be. Okay. Yeah. Yep. So, um, yeah, let's, can we just cycle through the different lighting options here, please? Do upper zone. So you want to hold at this distance? Is this good? Yeah, I'd say that's good. That's good to start. Okay. So we're currently uh, mids and the starboard port, the light's a little bit out. Okay. You can see it in the Argus view, how I far can. out the yeah. arm is. Yeah. So I can turn that off. That's yeah. off. That doesn't make a, a whole lot of difference, but you like it off or on? Can you turn off all the other lights first? Oh. Um, let's just turn it off for now and uh, turn on all the other lights. There's uppers only. Yep. There's and what's mids only look like? There's mids only is uh, can you retract the cameras all the way in yeah you want porch in too yeah Is there a limit on this? Uh, all the way in. Yeah, but am I gonna smoosh cable or no, something? No, 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 you're fine. Okay. Uh. Okay, 
It's all the way in. We're going to have to be get closer then. Let's get closer by another meter or so. Okay. Can we get Atlanta down lower? You're not comfortable yet. I'm coming down. And do you want me to adjust any of my lighting? Mm, yeah, one sec. Let me know when you're when you guys are stable and happy, and then I'll see what see what it looks like with just um, just Atlanta's lights. How low do you want me to come? As low as you can go, safely. Yeah, you can Robert. come. You can come down and uh, go to eight anyway. Eight. Maybe we gotta be kind of off to the side, though. Yeah. Can we just uh, can we turn off all lights on Herc? Let's see if we can get rid of some of the backscatter and. Maybe do the photogrammetry just with Atalanta. We're at a uh, ten right now. Do you want me to stop here or go lower still? What's the orientation of the lighting? Is the lighting hitting the uh, sub? Yeah. Turn on all the lights on Atalanta. There we go. All right. Do you want to have it off to the side some? I do. Yes. So yeah. So can we? Yeah, over over here. So the lights are shining ahead of us. Five zero five meters at one three zero. Bridge, bridge, nav. Can we move five meters at one three zero? Devin, I haven't forgot about your question. I'll find a. No, that's okay. I, uh, according to that article, just five meters, please. They sent all three airplanes. Copy. Thank you. To avoid the capture, so I was just kind of curious about how we would have gotten a hold of one of them if all three of them had been. Yeah. So all of them were destroyed, not to fall into American hands, except one that was still at the factory um, that remained, and that's the one. Oh, that they was got it from the factory. Yeah. Okay. Can you turn on? Uh, let's try just. Uh, let's just down lights do for us with the cameras that far out. Wonder if we can kind of get ahead of the back scatter. <laughs> nope. <laughs> <laughs> Just forwards. Uppers or mids? Yeah, uppers. All right, and uh, and can you beam down towards the towards the bow of the submarine? I'm assuming it's the bow. Beam down. Uh yeah. Can you just turn to the left? 45 degrees. Let's see how far down we can uh, see. It's not the bow, but it's where the front end where it broke off. Yeah. Oh. Uh, well, I'll just turn left. Is that you, north? And you want me to scoot over to the, the uh, front I end? I want you to rotate to the port. Just I, I'm trying to see how far down oh. we can see down the sub. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Just getting oriented, you know? Oh. Hmm. Is this as high as the sub is? What? What are? We, do we have an idea of what we're looking at right now? We're on the just forward of the conning tower. Yeah, this is the hull. Where the it's broken off. Height of the hull. So the conning tower is like you might be able to see it in the distance here. No. Nope. No. Just. It's it's over there. <laughs> All right. If you look at one of the navigation screens, you can see it. It's the red portion. And it's, uh, is this kind of smushed? Is this it, red? It, yeah, it's, it's, it's tilted over slightly, I guess. You know? Okay, it's well. laying on its port side somewhat, but fairly upright. Huh. It is pretty smushed up. 
not much I can do here. Okay, so let's uh, let's let's just okay decision. Let's um, maintaining this standoff distance. I'm going to put this uh, camera here on full screen. Uh, what I'm looking at, this is out of the port side camera zoomed in. Um, we want to be at a perfect um, 90 degree standoff of about like maybe one and a half meters, kind of getting as close as we can while still being able to see a foot or so of sand. Okay. Yeah. Bob, I'm right. framing up on the, uh, on yeah. the triclops, please. Right. But essentially we're just, we're just trying to get as close as we possibly can to do a full sweep of the lower section of whatever piece of the, the keel I guess this yeah. must be, and uh, then we'll just reassess once we're down. Is that okay? Do you Ten? want you want Ad Atlanta in front, lighting the? Yeah, and scene. Atlanta's kind of got to troll along here. We're just really struggling with uh, the the marine snow. So essentially, we're using Atlanta as the primary lighting platform. We're supplementing that with just a little bit of four uppers that we have here without trying to blast ourselves too much with the marine snow. Sound like a plan, Stan? We'll see. All right. <laughs> That's all we can do. That's all we can ask and for. Triclops going out, Pete. That's Safi 3. Is yes. that right? Okay. Yep. That's Triclops. Yeah. Hmm. Okay, Robert, I'm going to start that chip move. At three five zero. Bridge. How's this? Bridge. Uh, I think that's good. Three yep. zero at three five zero, please. And I'm recording two one three. Good. Copy. Thank you. Okay. Um. Well, let's... Um, so that looks like the inner pressure hull. It's a double hull, right? So it's the inner hull and outer hull we're seeing there with the ribs in between. Yeah, it must be. Yeah. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm on my way. On your way. Let's, uh, let's do this. Hey, you Slow got, and it, steady. You got it happening? Yep, Ship I got it move happening. Ship is in. Uh, you. Atalanta will start moving in a second. <laughs> You know, while we're waiting for the ship move like this, yeah. uh, can you kind of zig uh, go up and down and up and down like uh, maybe? <laughs> just to basically, let's can we just paint the hull with light? Yeah, I just I don't want to kick up a lot of dirt though. Uh, well, yeah, that's true. Can't get much worse. As long as we have the uh, we at least have the. Current. We have the current going for us, and that's not bad. Yeah. Do you want all my lights yeah. on at Ad on Atalanta? Yeah, just every the way it is? every light every light available on Atalanta. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. This is perfect, Robert. Just let's just take every available second as the ship is slowly moving to paint the hull with as much light as we can on this side. Okay. And this is a perfect pace. We're going to kind of spirograph our way down the hole, essentially, going like that, with lots of overlap. How high do we want to go? As high as you can. As high as I can. Yeah, I want to take advantage of every second of the ship move here. Up and down, spirograph. That come to mind a spirograph. Spirographs can go in all kinds of directions. Well, exactly. This is your. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, this is going to be a real challenge to us. Look how deep it goes. Yeah, I was. I'm still a little confused on what's in the background. Oh, there's one of the guns. Oh yeah. No, Nautilus, this is Hans. This is a very wide design, essentially two parallel inner pressure hulls side by side. And so we're looking at the place where some of the hangar would have been that's been ripped off the deck 
forward of the conning tower at the main break when the bow is, of course, missing and at a distance away. Uh, but this, the conning tower is not midship center line. It's to the side, and this huge watertight hangar took up, was attached to the main deck. Yep. And the door was forward to the conning tower, and that's all gone. That's all in the vicinity. Uh, so this is oh. quite a bit of dent in the deck, but it is very wide. Uh, Robert, yeah, you have to go back down and yeah. keep painting. Thanks, Hans. That was great. Thank you. That, yeah. yeah, excellent perspective, Hans. I we no idea what I was really. It's hard to imagine the double pressure hull. The width of this is just quite, yeah. Im it's quite impressive. It's yeah, very it's large. Impressive. Yeah, I imagine we were pretty surprised when we first saw them in 1945. Sure. So did did people live inside? either isolated pressure hull? How did that actually work? Well, they, they weren't isolated. They were sort of joined in a kind of a figure eight configuration. Ah. So it was one interior space, but it was not cylindrical. It was a kind of two cylinders smushed side by side, which is why it was so wide. Are there any similar designs now that are employed with a double pressure hull design? No, uh, I think in some notes there's reference made to a much later typhoon class Russian submarine that is also very wide. Uh, but I don't know if this was the origin to that. I don't I don't think ours are made that way. I think we're still kind of a single cylinder. Again, even noting that back then this was very costly for them to develop, so I can only imagine something similar at cost today. Right, costly to develop at a, a very late, a little too little, a little too late to really make any difference, but remarkable. Okay, so we are <laughs> not keeping up with the Joneses here. All right, full beans. Again, you can't, you can't actually move fast enough for Okay, you, you were saying you like the speed, though, so that was. Oh well, that's because I'm playing. I'm playing some Chopin in my head right now. Uh, but you can move. You can move faster. Okay. Well, I think we need to. All right, do it. Oh yeah, you're going. You're way behind, man. Yeah. Dance. Dancing. <laughs> I think we just concentrate on really painting this side hull and we go up, yeah. Okay, you, so you, we're gonna have to get the conning tower in a different pass, Yeah, definitely, right? definitely. Okay. So just like that, uh, going up and down. Yeah, okay. Just just give me just a little peek at all that structure and then come on down. Yeah, okay. Look at that implosion on the side. Is that enough peak? That yeah, that's peak. enough peak, that's good all peak. Right. And I just need about a foot or so of sand on the base. Okay. Just don't want to kick up the dirt too much here. Yeah. More. Yeah, there you go. That's good enough. <laughs> Thank you. Hans, are we looking at a potent like a small implosion spot there or I, I you know, I don't know if it's implosion. I mean I think the practice was to open up all the interior compartments if they're gonna dispose of subs and in, in several others we didn't see implosion evidence but certainly when this thing hits the bottom it stresses portions of the hull and the the outer hull plates flex and are weakened and with age and deterioration we see outer hull plates just continuing to um, flex a little bit create that orange active corrosion product that we saw in places anytime you see that bright orange color that's active corrosion, ferrous oxyhydroxide. Okay. Russ next week. I'm a big Neil, Neil Young fan. Um, but um, yeah, I don't know. Possibly implosion. If there were if there were sealed spaces that couldn't be opened like that, and this thing goes way beyond its crush depth, which it did, then there would be exactly that kind of 
implosion evidence in sections. What was the submarine's maximum depth? Or published, at least? 330 feet. Oh, wow. So looking at the rate of deterioration, this is 77 years yeah. that this has been under. It's remarkable. Qu quite impressive that it's still um, completely recognizable and in, in, uh, not overgrown at all in organic matter. Yeah, a lot less of the corals than we saw in the 201. Yeah. So far, right? Yeah. I feel like we did a a good job yesterday on the 201, but uh, this is so much bigger, and there's so much more here that, yeah, um, I don't know if we're going to give it its due respect, you know? Like I was going to say, yeah. you think five hours is going to be enough. I know, it's not. Yeah. It's definitely not. I mean, here we're going to, we've only got three hours left, and we're three hours? we got to be up by two to keep keep the machine in motion. Well, I don't know how critical is the the cable greasing. You know, that this is a <coughs> that's remarkable. And that's the ROV guy asking that question. I know that is the I'm ROV like, guy. Asking that who question. am I going to argue the point with that, that we need to do this? It's like, <laughs> well, I'm not I think the those are my favorite guesses. I don't make those kind of decisions though. Fair. I'll ask that question. Uh, yeah. To OET proper. Um, yeah, definitely something that's hard to appreciate is the sheer scale of this until you actually yeah, see right. it. We've already been here doing this, and we're only a third of the way down half of the submarine, right? Because the. Uh, it's, Entire stern section. Is this? Are we heading to the bow or the stern? The stern. So, oh, we're heading to the stern again. The bow is missing. Yeah, it's a separate piece. Yeah. Mrs. Hans, I've got a remark on the dig ousting cables. Those are my favorite cables. We see them all the time. Those, those series of electrical cables stapled to the side of the hull there and running fore and aft. That's for the mines. So, yeah, Hans. they used to charge them and reduce the magnetic signature of the vessels during war. Do you think the um, Navy thought that this kind of imagery would be? available 70 some years later mm, not at all to see the results of their testing well, i know i wonder if the at the time they thought they were just discarding of you know trash and they discarded it so deep that no one would ever be able to to recover or even visit it you know and here we are this is a shallower dive for us it's it's just a Look at the decks deteriorated. That was a wood deck, right? So those are all that's left of the wooden planks. That's the gun. Yeah, that does look like wood. Is that a gun there? Yep. Yep. I'll get you the specifics.
it's amazing there's even remnants of wood still. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are we doing okay? Doing great. Yeah, this is okay. awesome. Um, I was just discussing back here with uh, Bob, um, and uh, until told otherwise in terms of uh, the timing of this, uh, kind of looking at our pace, I'm kind of envisioning we do this, we go forward and back, or we're going, I'm sorry, to the stern where the screws will be, right? Yeah. Um, while Atalanta's down at the stern, let's do the same thing and cover the entire width of the stern of this vessel yep. with photogrammetry, kind of wiggling around within the confines of your tether. Um, and then I want to do a photogrammetry back to the bow. Um, we're going to kind of wiggle our way back to the bow like that. On Up the, the other side? side? Nope, yeah. nope, nope. Oh, right, right here. Okay. Yeah, I want to. I really want to concentrate on getting at least one side of this double hull, double hull pressure hull design okay. well. Instead, so we'll go back to the bow. Um, or what remains of the bow? Sorry, you know what I mean. That side yeah. of the the sub. Yeah. Within the confines of the tether, we'll really comprehensively get the wreckage uh, of the broken off section. And then finally, we'll do another pass towards the screws where we do comprehensive coverage of the deck guns and right. conning tower. That's too much, too much information at once. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, like just, it's, I'm also saying it to me. Yeah. You're, you're thinking it through. Right. Yeah. And then we'll worry about immersive filmmaking once we're back. Okay, so we're almost to the end here. So what do you want to do at the end? We're going to... Continue around to get the full coverage of the stern. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that is quite some damage. I wonder if that, you know, this whole stern section is on impact. Or yeah. if that was also maybe inclusion damage with Hello, a sealed chamber deck. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you still got space. Wow. <laughs> keep keep backing up, uh, yeah, Robert, to the make sure you screw. get this, all of the screw and some sand around the screw. Yeah, Roger. Can you wiggle a, a, a lateral to the right, too, and get the other facets and the angles of that screw? All right. And a little half moon arc, please. Facets and angles. how bright that metal still is. It almost looks like stainless. Probably was. Yeah. I have pokey, uh, pokey heading in here. Uh, no more auto head. There we go. Did you want more of the shaft? or? Uh, no. Yeah, just a little bit more, just since we have some tether room. That's good. Okay. We probably got that other bit of it anyway. Yeah, we did. There you go. Okay. So yeah, let's uh, now let's start just uh, painting light um, along the entire uh, stern. Okay. Right. And then I'm not good. If you're willing to let Argus go down more, uh, that would be really helpful for the light. It took me a minute, but Coming that was a, a little bit. 5.7 inch deck gun. Can you Single barrel see what the tether is doing? I wasn't been paying attention. So. I think the, we're uh, right. 401 also had uh, get closer, Robert. Triple anti-aircraft guns, which we have not seen yet. Wow.
Can we get lasers on briefly, please? There you go. That puts things into Kristen, can you uh, mark lasers on real quick? Thank you. For anyone watching, these lasers are 10 centimeters apart, and we'll use this couple of frames to orient the uh, size of the model that we produce. Uh, you can turn lasers off, too. Thank you. Do you want me to? Yeah. Thank you. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. As a metal holding up really well, it says uh, we're getting we're being told that these uh, props were manganese bronze. Manganese bronze. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Still yeah. shiny. All right, I gotta get the upper part of this. Yeah. Looks like a wheel. Beautiful. Kristen, it does look like different coral species, huh? Yeah, it definitely does. Just a few different types, though. Not yeah. too many. And yeah, it's pretty sparsely populated for the most part. Robert, do you have enough uh, tether to peek around the other side of this weird metal? Uh, well, like there's that. this uh, bow plane or whatever it is, or uh, stern yeah. plane. Yeah, Roger structure it's kind of in the way do you want me to move Atalanta more astern uh, uh, we're going to come around the other side so uh, I think we're going to you can just go over the top of it we yep can, that's good can, enough uh, can you go forward okay. those kind of get, get closer to the pokey out metal bit Maybe. Bridge, bridge, nav. One, five meters at zero, eight, zero, please. Okay, that's good enough. Let's paint light around the other end. Okay. All right, going around the stern here. Copy. Aren't those the stern guards to protect the dive planes and, and props when you're near the, the wharf or pier? Oh. Makes perfect Fairly sense. familiar. Yeah. I'm going up a bit so you can pass me comfortably with a tether and then I'll come back down. Yeah. Okay. Look how Sounds big the good. prop is compared to the, the body. I mean, that is a massive prop when you pull back like this. It really is. Okay, we're going to have to get our light situated here. Yep. Yep, the ship is moving. Ada will be there in All right, just a little bit. That's a nice image, though. Right yeah, there. it's really beautiful. It's just extraordinary with the uh, light of Atalanta also. Yeah. Just experimentally, since we're waiting for Atalanta, can you turn off all lights on Herc, please? Okay. Yeah, that's it right there. Oh, well. So let's not, let's not get too... Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just continue with photogrammetry. It's very pretty, but we're... <laughs> Stay on target, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> and one can see out on tap feed two and three. To, and this is just a preview of what we'll look at a little later. But we're gonna we're gonna complete the mission, right? Yes. Commandant. 
and then uh, <laughs> we'll continue. Oh, light, lights on. One thing at a time. Lights on? Yeah, blow out this image. Don't don't that show was, me what could be. That was uppers, right? Yeah, it was yeah. light. Yeah, that's correct. So um, now we're gonna uh, paint light on the way back up. On the oh, way. Oh, um, and and uh, wait uh, on the way back on the up way. on the other side. That's correct. Yeah, uh, but Bob does want. Uh, uh, Dr. Ballard does want to see the um, blade sticking out there. Oh yeah, that's it. It's buried. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go back, following yeah. the same line, the same uh, okay. side of the hull. What is that? The starboard. Yep. Um, uh, but we're gonna basically uh, uh, fly over the top of the submarine on that side. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So you want to be lined up on it like yep, this? Yep, lined up like that on that, but a little bit more biased to the, the to the starboard. No, we okay. yeah, we got that. Yeah. Say when. When. Uh, okay. And then lower too. Yeah. Okay. When and more dangerous, if that's yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. I want low, low, low danger. Ooh, I saw a high danger. <laughs> Medium. Bridge, bridge nav, <laughs> two you, zero at two three zero. Can please. you try extending out the cameras again, all the way until they kind of flop forward a little bit? So the floppy part? Yeah. <laughs> floppy part. <laughs> yeah, we'll do that when we do immersive filming. That, like that? It's all the way yeah, out. Yeah, there you go. Do that. Okay. Uh, just, you know, gentle. Don't, don't run them into the don't, sub? No bonks, please. No bounce. Oh, yeah. Bonks. Pete, can we put the... Uh, no bonks. Can we put the Triclops cam on uh, the upper right? Copy that. Just now with the... All right. What do you want to do about this bit? you want to go around it or over it? Over. Uh, well, actually around. Maintain a... Maintain, please maintain a steady uh, offset of like one meter or whatever from the actual hull and wiggle around any obstructions. Okay. Yesterday, Dan got a little too high in one of the sections and... He lost track. But yeah, yeah, yeah. He's probably okay. looking at a jellyfish or something. Uh. <laughs> Ooh, shiny. <laughs> All right, oh. this is a little a little tricky right here. Right. I believe in you. See, that was back to what I was saying. If anybody can do it, Robert can. Yeah, Robert can do it. Yeah. Nautilus, this is Hans. It looks like they're using the red marks to do some measurements in their assessment in Pearl Harbor again. I'm seeing some of those red marks maybe. Uh -huh. I saw it on the, the stern there, too, and we saw it yesterday on the 201. Right. How are we doing with the uh, Atalanta's got to catch up a bit. Yeah. Can, can you face the other way since we're waiting for Atalanta catch up? Yeah. Order. I'm gonna go send to uh, bottom. So the viewer asking how difficult is it to keep the currents from pushing the ROVs into the sub? Have you had any difficulties, Robert? Feeling? Fortunately, there's little to no current right now. And then we've got at Atlanta that really takes the balance of most there's of your, that to help your keep back us shot stable. of that plate. Yeah, that's yeah, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Okay. Can you pirouette around their plate without uh, entanglement? Like, like over the top? Yeah. Uh, that's kind of. I'm not gonna know what's happening back there. All really. right, no worries. Yeah. It's more of those barkings. Yeah. At twelve o'clock. All right, that's good enough. Yeah. I mean, I can sort of see back there. I could try. We can go a little bit. I'm just maximizing time while we're waiting for Adam right. to get chunking. Yeah. 
Yeah, there you go. Is that, is that enough? Yeah, get closer. Oh my God. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta let those colors pop. You can also see, Robert, I, I adjusted so you see the top down camera. So the camera from the bumper bar is now showing the downward angle. So you yeah. can see the two pieces of jewelry there. Okay, is that, you get enough? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, go. Right. Are they indicating? Uh, bridge, bridge nav, two zero at one seven zero, please. Can you try turning downs for me? Downs. I know I'm not gonna like it, but I can't help myself. You're, you're well, gonna hate that. Of course I am, but that's terrible. Copy. Thank Dude, you. Why don't put that on there? How about mids? You just got too much backscatter. That shows what we're doing. That shows what we're doing. Do you want them or no? Yay or nay? Huh? I'm sorry? You want those lights no, or no? No, it's terrible. No, yeah. thank you. All right. So to our viewer asking, um, 2,000, over 2,700 feet um, at 836 meters. Scuba diving is not going to be possible for you to be able to view this. Uh, our best yeah. bets are the ROVs that keep keep people out of the water and allow us to stay down for an extended period of time to get all this imaging. And yes, we do know um, this particular submarine was sunk by the U.S. Navy after it had been surrendered. And um, that was back in 1946. Got a lot of shadow here. Yeah, that's okay. Which one? No, can't send out fisheye. Uh, do you want to wait for Atalanta to? Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you wiggle back and forth and paint it? And maybe to the other, yeah, there you go. Let's just use the, it's forwards only right now? This is, uh, yeah, the uppers. All right. Yeah, and maybe paint the other we side We have the, the manip sticking out there too, if you want to try the port and starboard light. Yeah, let's try that. There it is. Any better? Can you wiggle, can you extend it more? Uh, I'd <laughs> rather not. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can you turn it off? Yeah. Yeah, that's better. Turn it on. Keep I'm it on. on. All right. Might as well add back scatter to that side. Um, we'll go around to the other side, please. Which which other side? Uh, the uh, the port side of the the submarine. Oh, you want to go? So you want me to go over to the top? Yeah, over the top while we have the time. Uh, well, the ship is on the move. Atalanta's. Being a little jumpy, but it should start moving south soon. Promises, promises. Uh, everything's going as well. So I'm being told that since this had two side by side pressure holes, they needed two uh, torpedoes to actually fulfill the mission of sinking it. Wow. Bridge, bridge nav, three zero meters at one six five, please. Nautilus is the shore, can you hear? Yeah. Roger. Copy, thanks. Closer. Please. 
Hello. Yeah, I just I didn't want to run into that the uh, guard that's sticking out. I just yeah. wanted to see that. I get enough down? Yeah. Atlanta is coming ahead of you a little now. Yeah. Right. I think we're just doing a quickie over here. Yeah. yeah. Copy. You'll have time to catch up. Not that much, I, I know. All right, you good over here? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Doing great. All right, coming back over. What you end up seeing when you get to a site like this, particularly when you've had torpedo detonations, but also a quicker sinking, is you get all sorts of compression damage to the outer hull as well as to the inner pressure hull. So we're seeing a bit of that as well as what's been happening to the deck where the wood has been eaten away by marine organisms, only leaving some of it left in and around where the metal fasteners have protected the wood to their coat. All right, let's uh, pirouette around the uh, deck gun, please. And uh, Atalanta, lower, por favor. Got it. I have to say this is a better look than the last time we were on one of these. I was in the sub with Hans when we were coming up on I-400 at the moment of its discovery. And this was one of the first things we saw was this very same type of deck gun. But it's one thing to look at it through the porthole of a Pisces sub. It's another to see it with the incredible systems that we have with Nautilus. I agree with you, Jib. It's, it's easier on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> I can only imagine craning through a little porthole. We, <laughs> we feel bad that the, uh, you know, the resolution is is degraded over the satellite signal, and you can't see the, you know, the 6K camera that we're able to view in the van. Gentlemen, do you recall your dive time and how long you were able to observe? It was the limits of uh, the O2 system and the scrubbers and three of us in the sub with Hans, me, and Terry. But uh, it was only a matter of a few hours, as I recollect. But it was still enough for us to circle around and take a look. But it was that keyhole kind of a look. Yeah. Yeah, it's much more like being in a big dark cave with a small flashlight. And this is, um, you know, much, much more interesting. Not that I'm not appreciative. I mean, Hurl has found, you know, so many of these deep water historic sites around the islands here over the years. It's been remarkable. What are we doing for wraps? We got to get yeah. a wrap out. I'm going to back off and get a wrap out. Okay, sounds good. Atalanta is still on the move, but the ship is paused. You are. I'm going to lift up. Yep. Uh, Dave, from my perspective, you can. Uh, Zeus is yours. I'm not going to be using that image, so. All right, coming around. 
You know, for the corrosion, Hans, it's great to still see some of the hull paint on this. I agree. Say, gentlemen, what was your is your opinion of uh, the deterioration process? Is it still very similar to how you saw it years ago? I think so. Um, you know, there's always going to be some of the outer wall, which is thinner um, and, and more damaged in places that, that can flex or be or have active corrosion. There are spots of active corrosion always, uh, but still sitting upright on the solid sea floor, relatively intact, except for the areas that aren't. Thank okay, we're you. Getting a bit. Far, I think. Yep. Oh, I gotta catch up here. I'm gonna well, lift that to get safer. Yeah. Can we stop? We are stopped. Okay. All right. We're gonna be wiggled around here a bit. Um. Okay. It, it never gets old, though. It never does. Yeah, I mean, and while the these things the change metal. slowly over time, you keep being reminded that this deep ocean environment is an incredible museum. Absolutely. And the rates of corrosion are so much less that it's just, it, it, you just feel privileged. But I think what's particularly good is that that privilege is extended thanks to telepresence to all sorts of folks all over the world. You guys are about 15 meters apart now, so okay. it should be a little more comfortable. And Atalanta has stopped at okay. the moment. Very good. Yep, just still doing this, kind of dip down to the side just a little bit, and then up and over and back and dip. And... Yep, exactly. Just like that, so I get a little bit of the side pressure hull and then come back around and up on top. All right. I can't tell if I'm uh, over the ship or the submarine at all. I think uh, you're all right. Okay. I'm, I'm almost like 90 degrees to it, so I think you're, yeah. That's, yeah. It looks good. You're right on the edge, human, yeah. and I'm going to take you off with our next move. Okay. Just cool. a little. I'm going to just be a little bit more conservative then about going down. Totally. Yeah, you're still about, I think, 20 meters from the sticky outy point, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, you're up quite a ways. I mean, you can see the ribs there. See it? Yeah, yeah, I see it. You could come down. I'm going to come down a bit then. Yeah, I need light. Hmm. Yeah, Nautilus, this is Hans. I think we might be in the area now where the hangar was ripped out of there. So we've moved forward towards the conning tower, but that hangar was some 150 feet long. Wow. Um, and it's gone. Hans, remember when we went up to I-400 and we were looking at the same kind of an area? These things just seem to have torn out. It may be because they, were, they had... Yeah. They had air still in them, and I think that that must have helped to pull these things free with the explosion. Possibly. Yeah, it makes sense. If I remember correctly, our dives on the I-401, the hangar, which is separate from the main wreck, is kind of nose down, door down, and the door is still attached and closed. But, Jim, if you remember the I-400 hangar, that, that was also separated from the main hall, and the door was broken off and elsewhere as well. Yeah. No, and it, I mean, that is such a massive structure.
All right, Robert. Yeah. Yeah, keep going. I feel like you got to be closer, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Get closer. I always want to be closer. There's piece sticking out. I didn't yeah, want yeah. To run yeah. Into that. Wow. It's amazing to think of, we know how, how quickly they worked at building these to yeah. get them out, to see the structural integrity that, that this has to be still intact as it is after all it's gone through and built so quickly. It's, it's incredible. Okay, I'm gonna go back over to the other side. Yeah. Yeah, we don't want the We're conning get, tower between look, us. Look, look here and you can see the inner hull with yeah. the outer hull outside. There's the pressure hull, yep. and that's the most rugged structure because what we've got here is a hull that was built to take up to 100 meters of pressure, yeah. wow. and to, keep, to, to be there and to keep the crew safe and functional. Hey, Robert, with this angle, can you go back down towards the stern just a little bit? I'm worried we missed some spots of this upper pressure hull. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get full coverage doing it like this, but... No, but... It'll I'll be on the other, this other side. Yeah, that's fine. Let's go back to the other side as planned. Wait, so you want to? No, not this side. Sorry. Yeah, just lateral just to the right, and then okay. let's go. Let's resume our our All planned right. track. Okay. You might be trying to bite off too much there. Yeah. And uh, if we can get lower too. Yeah. I like it's lower. Pretty. <laughs> And to our viewer asking, Jonathan's going to go back and review his footage um, of that deck gun and see uh, if he's got the best quality. If he does, he will definitely be uploading that, I'm sure. Yeah. Did we get the other side of the deck gun, Robert? We went all the way around the deck gun. Okay. I don't know if you got like all the under underside bits, but you know. Yep. Bridge, bridge, nav, two zero meters at one eight five, please. Devin, you were commenting on how quickly these submarines were being produced near the Copy, end of the war. Thank you. Uh, one of the things that was noted was that uh, the labor shortage that the Japanese had trying to, to uh, not only build submarines, but all the other war-related um, re rebuild and construction to support their effort, that, that young girls 14 and 15 years old were in the factory building these submarines. Oh, yeah. wow. So they experienced something very similar to the U.S. at that particular time when we started putting women in manufacturing roles to help crank things out and make sure that supplies were ready. And Oh, so I'm, I'm mistaken. It wasn't submarines. It was the aircraft that goes in the hangar is where the, the 12 to 15-year-old schoolgirls were employed as aircraft workers. Wow. Mobilization for total war yeah. is known on yeah. both sides, and I think that's largely forgotten today. But what's also forgotten is that that mobilization was part of the justification for the aerial attacks and the fire bombings as well mm -hmm. as the dropping of the atomic bomb was yeah. because the, the argument was made that these cities and these factories were now military targets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The 400 and 401 were, their ultimate mission was to 
take out the locks on the Panama Canal to stop the resupply of the American fleet in the Pacific. They never made it. The war ended before uh, they were they were just in the training phases of that mission when the war ended. Oh, here we see, here's your uh, designation, Jonathan. Yeah. Yeah, so how do we want to handle this? Uh, just We're still photogrammetry. Let's still just kind of continue to paint up, but we need to concentrate on the deck. Yeah, Complete okay, the deck so we're going to come back and do this We're going to come back and do this later. Okay. That's correct, right. yeah. Coming back down. So while the hangar got torn away, what we are clearly seeing here is what's left of what most people call the conning tower, or more properly the sail, with some of the pressure hull fittings that went up through that, uh, and very powerfully, you know, still painted the designation on the side. Yeah. A powerful image. The, the thing that has always struck me about the, the subs and the mission is that the Panama Canal operation as planned had certainly been something that had been very much desired. Yamamoto's original idea was to strike at an American city. He was thinking New York, for example, with that type of an effect that the Doolittle Raid had had on Japan. But instead, as the planning shifted towards the Panama Canal to keep vessels from coming into the Pacific, that mission went all the way up to, in terms of the planning, right up. Uh, until just June of 1945, when the decision was made to shift to the fleet anchorage at Ulithi, and that response came as a result of the intensive firebombing that were devastating Japanese cities. The thought was to strike the American fleet at that large fleet anchorage where much of the Navy was, was based, uh, and it was there that the two vessels were heading in a two-prong operation that intended to, to hit Ulithi and hit hard, with the Ceyron aircraft actually being used as kamikaze craft to wow. strike the fleet. But instead, they were intercepted on the high seas after Japan had surrendered, and as we know, were then turned over uh, to the United States Navy. That surrender was very carefully negotiated. It was very tense. The crews of the American subs were very, very respectful. The, re the surrender was handled very well. There was no bloodshed, although the commander of I-400 did shoot himself because he was wanted as a war criminal because of the crimes he had committed in the murder of Allied seamen when he had sunk their ships and come across their life rafts and had them all shot. Wow. Oh, wow. So much history that plays a part with the images that we're seeing. So appreciative to have the background for this. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Sorry that I was a little late in coming in. No, glad to have you here. Well, yeah, the position the didn't. Go ahead. Body over the side, Jim. While the prize yeah. crew was on board, allegedly the crew has the commander removed and got him over the side and buried him at sea, supposedly without anyone in the prize crew knowing. Yes, yes, and a powerful moment. He left three letters. Uh, one was to his crew, one was to his, the Navy, and the other was to his wife. But in that, one of the officers said that he, he pointedly remarked to some of the other officers before that he knew he would have to pay for what he had done earlier in the war in committing those atrocities. Wow. We're really getting a clear view of the, uh, the bracing for that, uh, that hangar, but also the exterior of the pressure hull. Most folks don't understand, I don't think, you know, really know, uh, if you haven't been exposed to the submarine world, that there are two hulls. There's the outer hull, which most people think is the full hull of a sub, but you've got that inner pressure hole, carefully and rigidly reinforced, that is where the crew lives. Um, where, uh, if that's breached, it, it is all over, but subs could take damage on the outside. And as long as manifolds held, valves held, as long as that hole did not crack, they could ride out uh, 
a depth charge attack and hopefully get home, unless, of course, something jammed in the systems or leaking oil gave them away, or leaking air for that matter, and depth charges continued to hammer them down. But they were built to a certain extent to withstand some of those forces. There's a, so we talked about how the, this particular submarine wasn't involved in, uh, in combat at sea. It was, it was working up for this big mission, but there are a few notes of, uh, while it and its sister sub were in dry dock, they were strafed, but not damaged. And then there's another note, uh, where did it go? Uh, uh, this is the 12th of April, 1945, as they're passing, uh, the, the notes have, they're passing a certain lighthouse early in the morning, I-401 stern grazes a mine laid by a Boeing B-29. Some instruments and the aft ballast tank valves are damaged. I-401 is forced to return for repairs. I-400 completes the tanker mission and returns with 1,700 tons of fuel oil. And fuel oil was uh, one of the key elements that the U.S. was targeting, right, to, to choke Japan. They had no way to produce their own right. fuels, right? So if we could eliminate their ability to refuel, we could basically tie up the fleet. Mm -hmm. And so it was interesting that the... 401 was on a was damaged on a fuel run by a, a US mine. I guess I say that I, Well, and that fuel was so good. It you're right, the fuel was so important because you said 1700 tons. These vessels were built to take nearly double, I mean 3530 tons of fuel oil, which gave them a range of 37,500 nautical miles. Wow. If they, if they ran at 14 knots. These subs had a profound impact on the United States as we studied them. While it was a fast study because the Russians after Yalta were hammering hard on getting some of these for themselves, it was that the large size, it was that fuel capacity, the ability to go around the world, but it also was those hangars because those hangars in launching the aircraft it wasn't necessarily a new idea. The British had experimented with submarines as aircraft carriers with biplanes in World War I. But what the United States now saw with the new technology that had come out of the war with rockets was that here was another opportunity to make the submarine a different type of weapon, one that perhaps not, would, would not just launch aircraft but could also launch missiles. And that familiarity that was gained in quickly studying I-400 and I-401 and I-402 would lead to the United States Navy developing its own on-deck hangar systems for launching some of our very first missiles, missiles that initially started with conventional